Hi, everybody. Welcome to Am I the Asshole Podcast. I'm Danny Vega, joined by my lovely co-host, Sarah Levine. We're so excited. We have a very special guest today. She's been on Conan, Colbert. She has a show on the Keith and the Girl Network called Nonsense. Carmen Lynch, thank you so much for being here. Hi. Thank you, guys. Yay. We're so excited to have you. I got a recent incident, guys. This is wild. Okay. Go over here to <laughs> Fairway. It's a good grocery store. They're it's open. no Wegmans, but it's pretty good. I got I got to go to Wegmans. You I keep do. hearing the hype. So I go over to Fairway. They're open till 1 a.m. I don't know why. Respect. Right? <laughs> go in there and I, I go to check out. And um, the, the cashier is clearly very high on marijuana. And I have a moment of judgment. And I go, why am I going to judge? He's high. He's just scanning. No problem. Scans my goods. Right as he's going to bag my goods, which is like a kombucha and a hummus or something boring, he puts the the goods and then he realizes, oh, there's a bag still there. Because he's so high, he didn't give the person before me their bag. Wait, but they walked away without the bag? They walked away without the bag. What was in the bag? Um, I don't know. But at that moment, I was like... Well, she's probably still outside because he was kind of like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And I was like, well, she's probably right outside. Well, you can't like leave the Maybe. cash register. But and, and look, and I don't you know, I'm not a hero, Sarah. But in this moment, I was like, I'm going to find her. Oh. And I uh, I ran outside. I looked left. I looked right. And I saw she was like an, an oldish lady down by the corner. I booked it, ran oh my faster God. than I've ever ran, which is four miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I caught her at the corner and I go, hey, you left your back. So she comes back with me. She's like, thank you so much. I was like, I know how it is. I would be devastated if I didn't have my hummus and kombucha. I totally get it. Uh, we go back and his coworker uh, then takes over because this guy's so high. He's just like, oh, you know, I can't. It's too much, man. <laughs> they give me my, then finally I pay. They give me a bag. I open it. It's a random bunch of shit. What? They gave <laughs> me her bag, gave her my bag. So they messed up again. Wait, so you gave her your bag? No, I didn't take the bag with me. I ran out to chase oh, her and say, her. you forgot your bag. Oh, okay. Oh. So, well, because I didn't want to be running with a bag. That's going to slow you down. Right. Right. So, Flapping um, in the breeze. No anyway, good. finally, all the bags get to the people they need to go to. And uh, the, the high guy, you know, I like finally take my bag from him and he just kind of stares at me. And I'm like, so you, you going to say anything? And he's just like, no. And wow. I just and you he, just pulled like a disappointed dad on this guy. Well, it was like, for what reason? Can I get a thank you? Can I get a, I'm sorry. Like, are you going to take any responsibility for how this was 100% oh, your fault? He's too God. high yeah. to know what's happening. He's too high. Yeah. So anyway, am I the asshole? What's the deal? That was so nice of you. I mean, you started out the hero and then you just like didn't need to be a dick to this guy. So I should have just said, you're high. You're, I'm you should have just pass. let it go and then Swalked. laughed about it. And then we could have still talked about it on the podcast later. I think you net at zero. Ugh, wow. I can't believe I broke even on that shit. See, I was going to say that that was still really nice and he <laughs> needed kind of a dad to like. You think so? Exactly. He already knows he's high. He's probably like fucking I mean he doesn't care but still I yeah. think it probably felt good for you you needed to do that oh I needed it I need that I need to put people down yeah, otherwise I won't feel a little good closure. <laughs> it's kind of true <laughs> especially after that long run right I, <laughs> I should have been like listen son you need to switch to CBD it's the adult drug oh smoke hemp okay <laughs> I wonder if he still works there if he got fired I don't think so. He's working the, like the 1 a.m. shift at Fairway. Yeah, the, He's good. The general fine. vibe was like, Yeah, this as long is as fine. you're not like dead, I think <laughs> you're, you're right. good. <laughs> the best place to work when you're high is a rest, is a supermarket. Oh my so. God. Yeah, but I feel like that's torture because you're staring at all the food yeah. and you can't eat it. Yeah, but it's not very good. It's Fairway. You know? I like Fairway. Three package hummus. Nobody's getting crazy for that. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. They got the olive bar and like all the cheeses. Mm-hmm. I always try to like grab something when no one's looking. Oh, yeah. But- you try to sneak a cheese in. It's sneak a cheese samples. or an olive. Really? And you, Not always, but once in a while. You get away with it? I mean, sometimes, yeah. What are they going to do? I, I, I yeah. put some in a container and then I grab an extra one. I don't You're just fine. like walk in, by. So you are still buying some? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, I see. So I'm not just one olive less. (laughs) Well, we got one heck of an app for you today. Uh, Carmen, you are bilingual. Si, senor. And what more proof do you people need? There we go. Yeah, that's all you. I mean, if you know two words, (laughs) 
<laughs> you're in. So. And you're the classiest kind of Spanish speaker. You're a Spanish speaker. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm from Spain, but that's not that's not hip right now. You know what I mean? It's really not. It's not. I mean, uh, I'm not Latino, but, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? That is the most fascinating thing about being from Spain is you don't get the Latino cred. I know. I know. So are you? do you identify as just white? I don't really know how that pans out. Sometimes I put Hispanic. Really? Yeah. But if I see something that says like HBO Latino, I'm like, can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it does, nothing says HBO Spain as far as I know. <laughs> I went to college for free because I marked Hispanic and I almost didn't. I almost just put white. So wow. thank God. Are you Hispanic? I am. No, he just lied. Uh, just I just lied. <laughs> that would yeah. be so I'm an up. Eskimo. Yeah. I'm black. I'm Asian. No, I. Uh, my parents were born in Cuba. Oh, nice. Do you yeah. speak Spanish? I, I don't. I okay. I can. I know es un caballo is the only thing I know. Nice. How to say. <laughs> which hasn't <laughs> affected my life yet. I've heard worse phrases. So. <laughs> right, right. That's, you can incorporate that in your New York City life. <laughs> Do you have any Spain cuss words? You know, Cubans have coño. Yeah, well, um, it's funny because I, I just posted this thing on Instagram from the show because um, I was like, how do you say vagina? And one of my <laughs> friends was like, chocha. <laughs> chocha. And then I asked my guy friend from Spain and he's like, it's chocho. And I'm like, my other guy friend is like, no, chocho is, a, is our pills. And I'm like, you guys make up your mind. But everybody <laughs> has their own words. That's so for funny. like body parts. So I ended wow. up going with Chocha because um, because we're in New York and there's a lot of Latinos here. So. Right. Well, I would think Chocha too because it's more feminine. It's more feminine. Yeah. Right. Chochisima. Anyway. I've uh, just been silent this entire time. <laughs> yes. Good. Uh, See. Well, our second story of the day, AITA for being livid at my roomie for calling me an ambulance by you, Digbix845. But first, AITA for refusing to help a Spanish speaking only customer by you, some shitty username 69. Before you scream, quote unquote, racist, let me give you some backstory. I'm a 22F in retail, and I'm the only one out of all my coworkers that communicate in Spanish. I'm not fluent, but I've learned enough to keep my Spanish-speaking customers happy and comfortable shopping in the store I work in. My coworkers and I are all Latino, families coming from Mexican heritage, and whenever a Spanish-speaking customer comes in, I usually take over and help them. Today, a father and son duo came into the store, and I go up to them to try and greet them. And before I could even say anything, the father stopped me by putting his hand out, says no, and proceeds to wave me away. After that, I left them alone and helped out anyone that needed help. At one point, I heard them trying to ask my coworkers for help, but they don't understand him, and my coworker obviously doesn't understand them. I go around helping out other customers and completely ignored the father-son duo, looking around, not being able to talk to anyone else. They left the store, and although what the father did was totally rude, I can't help but feel I should have just gone back up to them and tried to help. AITA. This just, it triggers all these moments where I've spoken to people in Spanish before, and they act like dicks, you know what I mean? Like... Like if I see someone who can't speak English and I know they look Spanish and I go up to them and I'm like, you know, with you that they you know, like I just started speaking to them. They'll, sometimes they'll be like, I can speak English. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. you're insulted that I'm trying to help you. Like I, you know, they take it as an insult. It's never happened to me because I've never <laughs> gone up to anyone and tried to speak to them in another language to um, offer them help. But right. two times someone has asked for help in the random languages that I do speak. And I'm like, oh my God, it's the best feeling ever. But that's all I can offer. Wait, in the random language you speak? Like what, uh, Like meme? Italian and uh. French. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they, they went English, you're saying? So no, like they were, I could hear them like speaking to each other and then they were like all confused, trying to talk to me in like broken English. And I'm like, nah, I got you fam. And then they were like all surprised. And I was oh, like, this is great. You speak a little French and germ, huh? Italian. Italian. Sorry, I got yeah. confused. Yeah, yeah, Europe, yeah, It's all the same. So, it's okay, so that's same. very funny. So you're, you're saying, though, this is a situation where you go into a store, you read that the employee probably speaks Spanish, and yeah. then they're kind of butthurt that you you sprung for Spanish. They're like, how dare you think I I can't speak English? And I was like, all right, Ouch. I'm that's just trying so to help you. I yeah. feel like when I was in Italy with my family, though, I would... In certain cities, like I could only speak Italian to people. But then like when I got to Florence or Rome, I would like start trying to order something in Italian and then they would like switch to English. And I'm like, OK, wow. Well, Can you give me. us a taste of your Italian? No. 
because you're going to make fun of me. I got a little mamma mia pepperoni. Yeah, that's Thank it. Thank you. That's 201. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very curious though, because uh, I'm really kind of obsessed before we go to the situation about obsessed. the Hispanic, okay. Spa- Spanish thing. It's very funny yeah. to me. So do you think, this is just a theory, these these Spanish speakers, they see you and you know you, you look white. You right. are technically white. I'm not sure what the rules are. Do you think maybe they're being like, oh, this white lady is trying to speak Spanish. It's like buzz off. It's not your language. There's like a, oh, does she think she's better than us kind of thing? Jam. You know, mm-hmm. when you're just like trying to help them in a situation. It's mm-hmm. just... It's happened a few, not all the time. Sometimes they look so happy. They're like, oh, gracias. Por favor. And then they'll just <laughs> Start go crying. into this like <laughs> spiel. And I'm like, slow down, you know. But every once in a while, they're just like, mm, you know. Damn. I had one time I had this, um, I worked as a teller right after college. And, you know, if the check was a certain amount, like a large amount, we had to go to the manager and get it verified. And, uh, and so I looked at the check and it was huge. And I was like, uh, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna, you know, show this to the manager. And she was speaking to one of her friends and she goes, Pero que se piensa que, que no es un cheque de verdad, okay? <laughs> you know, like she was saying like, how, you know, how dear how she do they think, think it's fake that it, yeah, that, that I'm not a, I'm a good customer. And I'm like, dude, I don't know you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ma'am, and I've never so, seen you before in my life. <laughs> and so I heard, I was listening and I, I love it when that happens because they never know I speak Spanish because I'm so tall. And I was like, <laughs> you know, and I just look, because they're all short. And, uh, and I look at her and I was like, Senora, oh yeah, eso es mi trabajo, yo tengo que hablar. And she was just like, that's she was shocked. I feel like that's like the best thing about looking white and being able to speak fluent yeah. Spanish is like you can catch people talking shit about you all the time. Right, right, right. Troja, El Trojan Caballo. Thank you. I found <laughs> oh, you it. did it. I finally oh, found it, Oh my God. It, folks. It's only been like 30 years. Well, my take on the situation here is, look, why can't she just loosen up a little bit? And this guy didn't say like, no, fuck you. He just said like, no. He said no. He put out his hand, said no, and waved her away. That is rude as hell. Well, maybe he was kind of, you know, you ever walk right into a store and you're flustered by all the retail displays and the music and the scent of perfume and shit all hits you at once. I just got I such know. an old man vibe from him. Like he's just <laughs> old in his, you know, ways and he just doesn't want to deal. I don't know if he's an asshole. He's just overwhelmed. But also if she's the designated like Spanish helper and the other coworkers are like, these people clearly need help. Why would they not like wave her over? Yeah, you're right. Like, That's kind of weird. So maybe they just didn't really need help. I don't know. What a handful writes, NTA, you offered help and were rejected. They didn't want your help, so you shouldn't feel obliged to help out. I, okay. I don't know why. I mean, aside from the dismissive hand wave, I don't really know why they're, the other people are necessarily the assholes. So what 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 is this dismissive hand wave? It, like, you think that he's just like, no, I'm he's not like, going to let a no. woman help me? Or he didn't, what if he didn't need help at that time? I don't why, I don't know why you got to bring hand gestures into it. You could just be like, no, thank you. Or whatever, or just say no and walk away. So it's kind of curt. The is it? Is it, it just the, seems extra rude. It's, it's like the no, no, and then he just waved her away. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, that's rude. That. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just obsessed over this hand wave. <laughs> Fender Precision writes, NTA, but sometimes it's nice to just help. Might make the guy rethink whatever he was thinking. Primary Candidate says, everyone sucks here. I imagine that the customer may have been trying to say that he didn't need help at the moment, but since he has limited English, he wasn't very tactful about it. Your job is to help customers and you didn't do that. Retail sucks. People suck. Customers can be terrible, but sometimes you have to grin and bear it. What is ESH? Everyone sucks here. Ha! I love it. <laughs> Did you make that up or is that just part of Reddit? This is all this is all made up by the oh. uh, Reddit overlords. Yeah, the, we made none mods. of it up. Everyone sucks here. I want to use that. I want to text that to someone. Go for Honestly, it. Honestly, do it. You They'll know? be like, what are you talking about? And you'll be like, oh, I can't remember, but it was good at the time. They haven't <laughs> sued us yet, so you should be good. Yeah. I mean, look, I think there's something to be said about the fact that, like, I don't know, your job is to help customers. I agree with primary candidate about that. And like, I just don't think what this, I think what this did, I would construe this as a slight, right? Yeah. Okay. This is what I think. I I don't think that the guy was wrong to refuse help because like sometimes you don't want help. But then also I think what she did is like just petty compliance. 
like he said no. And she's like, all right, you technically said no. And even though I can see that you're struggling, right. you already said no to me. So I don't I don't think she's necessarily wrong either. Yeah, that was actually yeah, the top comment. I agree. Oh, yeah. On Reddit. I didn't even read that. They need to cross post this to r slash malicious compliance, oh, which yeah. is a delicious There we go. That's, that's what I meant. Most of the posts involve an employer being like, hey, uh, you know, send me all the spam emails because I missed a single email. And then the IT guy is like, if I send you all the spam emails, you will receive an amount of emails that will destroy your computer. <laughs> and they're like, do what I say. And yep. then, they and do then it you and do it. And it breaks like- the whole thing. SJ all day, right? It's kind of leaning towards YTA because as a formal retail worker manager, it's like customer service 101 to follow up with customers, even if they reject your help when they walk in, especially because you saw them asking somebody else for help. So this person's kind of the top, the top, uh, dis- Asshole? Di- yeah, dissenter, no. dissenter. There we there go. There we go. Dissent. I, I mean, because I, I hate to take the manager perspective, the bourgeois to be like, well, be a good worker. But it's kind of like, doesn't it feel good to do your job? <laughs> right. A little bit. I mean, look, I was a restaurant waiter for two months. Oh, my God. No, no. I, I, I served my time, Sarah. Don't oh, mock my me. God. It's so hard to be a waiter. I think right? I was a restaurant waiter for like a month. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like too much. But do you still have it on your resume like Danny? No, I don't. It's the top of my resume. <laughs> That's the saddest part. It was just, it brings back so many horrible memories of dropping trays. So yeah. I took it off. I wasn't a dropper. I, I was just a sayer of things that should not be said, like this cup. Because I, I, I was like, a server. Like, don't you have anything to say to me? Yeah. Or like, I would just be like, oh, okay. Like, why do you. I feel like you'd be the person who would call people out when <laughs> so they bad. don't give a big enough tip. Did you do that? Uh, Kind of. They were Ooh, like. I was right. I, I was like, oh, hey, uh, uh, I got a lot of tables tonight because I was really overwhelmed and bad. <laughs> and I, was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry about the service in advance. And they're like, well, we're not going to get a very good tip. And I was like, well, it's a comedy club. So it's actually autograt. And they were like, open mouth Pikachu face. What the F? Love that. And then I remember one time my friend's parents came in and I kept bringing up their son and like he, that he was struggling in school or something like what? wild. I like ruined their whole night and I didn't even know. Oh I was like, God. oh yeah, my God. He's, he's smoking pot now. Huh? What club like, did you work what? at? <laughs> it's called Stand Up Live in, uh, in uh, Phoenix. Oh, okay. Big club. It's like oh an my improv God. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. SJL Day goes on, also leaning towards NTA because I get how frustrating it is when customers are rude to you and you're just trying to help. But then again, maybe he knew exactly what he was looking for when you first customer serviced him, but wasn't able to find it and needed assistance. So yeah, I'm going to go with YTA purely from a managerial standpoint because you lost a sale for your store. And if I were your manager, I would not be happy. See, I think this is hearkening back to a topic I used to argue about with Anthony a lot. And I'm wondering, Sarah, I don't know that we've gone here and I want to know what you guys think. It doesn't feel good to be petty. I I don't think it does. Oh my God. You're talking to the wrong person. Yeah. She enjoys it. I love being (laughs) petty. It's all I have to live for in this world. I don't feel like you are very petty though. I think you preach petty. I don't get the chance that often is the thing. What's the pettiest thing you've done this week? There we go. I mean, it's only Tuesday. Well, so give us an example. Last week, like seven in the yeah, last seven give days. us a petty example. Oh, I don't know, you guys. I can't. I don't think you're petty, Sarah. She's not mean at all, Carmen. Like, she's the nicest person. Yeah, I but know. would it bring me joy to be? Oh, I'll tell you. There this, we go. I don't even know if this is petty or just fucking mean, but like, back backstory I had this like on and off relationship with this guy for like over a year and it was like <laughs> clear that he did not want to date me but every time I would be like so what's going on like I can sense that this he would like be like no that's not it and like give me the runaround which was fucking annoying so anyway I kind of started to sense I was like oh I haven't he- heard from him in a while like weird I bet he's seeing someone and then I made like a joke and he did in fact confirm that he was seeing someone and I was like yeah I figured that was the case like okay. you could have just told me sure. and he was like, yeah, I realize that now because I'm telling you. He was like, I'm sorry about that. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. And then a couple hours go by and I'm like, no, it's not cool. And I was like, you don't have to apologize for not telling me what you should apologize to me for is like leading me on for over a year when I gave you multiple outs to just tell me the truth. And then I waited on Instagram until he saw it. And then I blocked him everywhere. So he couldn't respond so I guess that's the pettiest thing I've I done lately. Oh, that doesn't sound petty to me. Really? 
Okay. I mean, I, you had yeah. a reason to be mad. I don't know. Petty to me just sounds like, what is that woman wear? Like, it's just so superficial. Mm, interesting. Okay. I, I know. I kind of yeah. felt like you had a legitimate grievance. Yeah. Wow. Thank like you, guys. Like, he gave you the runaround oh for a God. year, and you're but like, yeah. hey, I got a sweet own. You're going to have one dissatisfying communication <laughs> with me. Yeah. I was like, on your side. Wow. Thank you, guys. Okay. Cool. H- hashtag not petty. Hashtag Sarah sucks at being mean. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll take that. That's fine. Uh, Narcoleptica writes NTA your managers slash supervisors might feel differently but F that guy oh my god he had his chance and he wrote you off pretty much immediately if he wants your help he can come and ask for it himself okay that's never gonna happen in the world of people slash customer service (laughs) like imagine this guy coming back with his tail between his legs being like actually I do need your help now like you would never do that no you would would just not get what you came here for so I'm curious because I feel like we we're not coming out with too many big perspectives here I guess I feel like the stakes are so low that I hardly care enough to like issue a verdict I don't feel bad for him because he pushed her away yeah and then she was just doing her job. I'm kind of on her side. Was she doing her job, Carmen? I got to push back a little bit. The thing bit. is, like, if you don't go above and beyond, you're still doing your job. Also, you're it's meeting annoying. expectations. When, like, even when a server comes over too many times and asks you if everything's okay, you know, like, I feel like, That's I don't true. Know. But you know what I hate when it's like, you're not ready the second you sit down and then you've lost them forever. And they're like, fuck these people. They're never going to make up their minds and they never come back. And they you're like, no, I'm sorry. I really just needed two minutes. It's oh, like I the hate worst. That. Yeah, I hate that. So. I think my fa- my least favorite kind of service is the one and done, where they just come up and they're like, "What do you want? What do you want to eat?" And I'm like, if I wanted to just place it all in one order, I would have gone to a fast casual place. Like, oh my god. that's part of the premise here. You freaking <laughs> savage! Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so I think we're all kind of landing at a similar place on this because, yeah, like this kind of sucked that she did this, but you are right, Sarah. She's still doing her job. I don't know that I could call her neglectful. No. It's not ideal from a managerial perspective. I want a real asshole. Is there like a really super asshole in here? Oh, I think we get some. We got some. Don't worry. This is like AITA the warm up. for refusing to help a Spanish speaking only customer. I'm going to have to go no assholes here. Yeah, that's where I was leaning. N A H. Yes. You got it. It okay. sounds like you're concurring, nah. Carmen. Nah. So we agree. N A H. A I T A for being livid at my roommate mm. for calling me an ambulance. Get ready to dive into the American healthcare system. <laughs> Can't wait. So Thursday, I went to a party one of my friends threw. It was your pretty standard college party, and I got pretty drunk, yada yada. When I went back to my house, I was stumbling around trying to get to my room. One of my housemates helped me to my room and told me to sleep it off, which I planned to do. I don't remember too much since I blacked out, but this is what some of my housemates told me. (laughs) My roommate was in the room when I came in, and he said I kept falling off the bed and talking to myself. He ended up calling an ambulance for me, and apparently the EMTs forced me to go to the hospital and threatened to call the police if I didn't go, so I didn't have a choice. When I woke up in the hospital the next morning, the nurse gave me papers to sign and then let me leave. They also stuck me with a $1,000 hospital bill for the ambulance. Since I was basically dragged to the hospital, I left my keys and phone inside so I couldn't get in. None of my housemates were home, so I ended up just waiting outside of the house for like an hour before one of them finally came back. On top of that, I missed my CAD class, Computer Aided Design class, which Did is a whole Did you just know that or you looked it up? Did you Google it? I know what CAD is, all right? I don't play this. Okay. I went to college. I was absolutely pissed with my roommate roommate for calling me an ambulance. Not only did I end up spending the night at some hospital, I got a G bill on top of it. It's one thing if I had alcohol poisoning or something like that, but I literally just slept at the hospital and left the next morning. The housemate who helped me inside was on my side. He said I was hammered, but it wasn't that bad, and I could have just slept it off. The roommate said he got scared and didn't know that they would take me to the hospital, but that just made me even more mad since there was like five other people in the house at the time, and his first reaction was to call the police rather than ask others. So, am I the asshole? I guess I have a lot of questions. Like, OP is like... Yeah, I totally planned to sleep it off. It's like, dude, you weren't planning anything. You were not like making rational thoughts. You were an incoherent yeah. mess of a non-person. Yeah, like you, you had no plans. of shit. I'm just kidding. Wow. I wouldn't go that far. Obviously. On the other hand, yeah. like what did the roommate think when he called an ambulance? Like you didn't know it would take him to the hospital? You called for medical assistance. What did you think was going to happen? And there's nothing you can do. Like just make him pass out, drink water. Like what is that? What is the doctor going to do? 
pump your stomach. So it's like, if you thought it was that severe that he needed to get his stomach pump, like you, you did think that he would get taken to the hospital. But if he's talking, even if it's incoherently, he's not like, he's not passed out, you know, he'll be fine. Exactly. Exactly. So the asshole's the guy who, who ordered the ambulance. Well, I think you hit on a huge point, which is that the person who called the ambulance is a, idiot because oh. if somebody's talking they're fine okay yeah. because if you're at the talking point your brain is still on right you're nowhere close to the we can't breathe anymore point so like all this guy had to do was drink some water and probably keep him awake because right you don't want to throw up in his mouth and right. he drowns on his own vomit stick um, him in the bathtub pour a bucket of cold water on him give him some coffee right do all the things the stereotypical things and then if he's freaking out then maybe but not that's not I feel that's like not I cool. need I need more background on this roommate because like do they have experience with drinking slash drunk people like you know it sounds like not. they just wanted to get rid of him like I don't want to deal with this interesting just let's have him I mean to him. the roommate's credit I looked it up on Mayo Clinic because I'm like I don't know what the signs of alcohol poisoning are aside from like oh your lips are turning blue and it does say that you can still alcohol can still be released from your stomach into your bloodstream even after you've stopped drinking. So maybe he was just like worried that it would continue to get worse. Right. And I, and I think that's the good beginning of a defense for this guy, because even though I think he was almost certainly wrong, we can imagine a situation where this guy is confused. Right. He's speaking incoherently, can't even sleep on a bed, not being able to sleep. How not drunk able, are you? I know, you can't right? sleep. Also, like falling off the bed is definitely like, what's going on? Yeah, there? And talking right? to yourself like that sounds like a mental problem. That doesn't sound <laughs> right? like you're drunk. So he's that drunk. So we'll just call that probably like a point, you know, one five or something like that. Like extreme inebriation. Not not at the threshold of dangerous. I mean, I, f- I forget what it gets you. I don't know. I was like, what is like the, the point at which you die? Because isn't it point oh eight is like the legal limit? Yeah. What? Point oh eight is nothing. Point oh eight really? is just you can't drive. Yeah. Okay, that's I've the never... arbitrary legal. There's people who can have point. 0.08 and I would trust them to fly an aircraft. I mean, it is so low. Okay. Like, I'm not saying, I, I'm not No, I'm just here, like, all right, I've never I had a breathalyzer, alcohol. so. No, but like, uh, the average person at 0.08 is pretty fine. I mean, I okay. think it's a great legal threshold. But what I was going to say is, that. so let's imagine this guy's at, at a 0.16 or whatever. He, he's pretty messed up. But then he takes a couple shots, right? That's going to take 45 minutes to reach his bloodstream or to start reaching his bloodstream. Right. And, and then you know, the roommate would have a more valid case. He's like, look, you were incoherent. You were unable to sleep. I, I thought you were like losing your head and I called the ambulance on you. And that actually brings me to uh, the next point, which is, wouldn't you call an Uber? I thought we were done with ambulances. Well, I just think these, the roommate like did the technical right thing, even though his judgment ended up being wrong. But what I was trying to get at in the group was like, I think he's they all still behaved kind of carelessly under the guise of like caring about someone. What does that mean? What was careless about this? So they kind of pushed this guy. It's like you're so concerned that he's dying. No one goes to the hospital with him. You push him out the door without his keys or his wallet or anything like you are supposed to give ID to the hospital. Also, Mm -hmm. like you can't just walk. I mean, you can just walk in there, but like ambulance, though. What do you mean? Like, you can't just go like, hey, I'll go No, you could follow them. Yeah, but they were all drunk. It doesn't say that. Well, you know, realistically. They probably weren't as drunk as he was. But yeah, that's a good point. I feel like they really And then none of them are even home when they know this guy. That was like, I literally just said that. I didn't even say like, oh, this guy's not the asshole because I was like, don't you think it's kind of shitty of the roommates to Mm. like know that your roommate was in the hospital and like you guys aren't going to be home. And I got this like flood of angry comments that were like, it's not my responsibility to miss work, miss class because my roommate can't hold his alcohol. I'm like, yeah, but you guys were like concerned he was dying, but, but the buck stops there. Like, that's it. You're like, as long as I don't have a felony on my hands, right. I'm good. Like, it just sounds all like, right. It sounds like they were just trying to get rid of the situation. They were like, I don't want to deal with this. I think you're painting a very strong picture of an everyone sucks here. I do have another point to make. If yep. it wasn't, it, though, going back to slightly defending the roommates calling of an ambulance, I would think that the medics and the ambulance, if he wasn't that messed up, I don't think they would force him to go to the hospital. Yeah, I mean... Right? They'd be like, here's some saline or whatever, dog. I mean, yeah, it's definitely also better safe than sorry. Like, I'm not going to call this guy an asshole for wanting to keep his roommate alive. But 
But well, no, but I think you undermined a lot the potential positive motives of that because it's like if it was so important, he would have gone along or done a little. I'm just a little trying more to point care. everything out. Yeah, I think you're I don't on know. Point. I think there's a lot of like sketchiness here. Karen H says, "YTA, it can be very easy to misjudge how bad off a very drunk person is, especially if those around you are drunk. Also, that's a good point. Their mm. judgment's impaired. Additionally, like someone said above, if they didn't call and you died, there's a risk for your roommates facing felony charges that could potentially include jail time for." negligence a geese a thousand dollars sucks and yes it sucks we have to deal with that at all but they're not the asshole for looking out for you and themselves i think it's a that's a pretty good point but i i am kind of stuck on what you said sarah there was no follow-through here to indicate this was uh, about caring yeah. in any real way i'm like you guys are and they're like oh well it's just your roommate and not your friend and so that's why i'm like y'all are wild like even if that's not technically wrong that's not nice either Absolutely. I'm like, I'm not drinking with you guys. What a monster. Haley yeah. J says YTA ESH. and also an alcoholic. No, fuck that. No, it's ridiculous. I'm like, there are so many people on Reddit who are just like, oh, you blacked out one time. Like you're an alcoholic. Mm. Seek help immediately. I'm like you guys oh are either God. lying or you just have never been in You've, like society or watched yeah. a college movie. It takes a while. Yeah. Well, isn't that, I, I mean, and Carmen, you could speak to this. Isn't it kind of mm. getting like fucked up and blasted and shit. That's a little bit American, isn't it? I mean, I thought the Irish, Um, I mean, yeah. in Spain, I mean, I've been around a lot of drunk people in Spain, but also they don't, immediately label it as you have a drinking problem. They're just like, <laughs> right. you know, wine is so cheap out there. It's just a thing. It's like water. You know? I guess I, I kind of had this impression that Europeans drank young, right? Because yeah. you can drink when you're like 16. So there's less of a culture in, in like American colleges where you're like getting blackout, you know, well, beer I mean, pong. Just all like these- anything else when it's taken away from you or it's like looked as, as taboo, you want to do it even more. So and- does that ring with you a little bit that Americans go a little crazier on the, on the booze? Yeah. Well, we also have like fraternities right. and all these other things that like, you know, make people want to drink more and uh, they just drink it all the time. So it just kind of feels like more like a social thing versus a rebel- rebellious right. thing. Top Reddit comment by Shrimp OD. So this guy is apparently OD'd on shrimp, which that's a <laughs> lot of shrimp. Writes, you're American, I presume. Your healthcare system is the asshole. Okay, we can agree. That's fine. Yes, um, it is quite unfortunate how it works. Second comment by, top comment by Nut Michelle says, YTA, don't get so wasted that you can't take care of yourself and things like this don't happen. Your roommate isn't an asshole for caring about your health and safety. Okay, counterpoint. Are you the asshole for like being salty that you got stuck with a thousand dollar bill that you didn't intend to have? You know, what do you mean? You're saying that he's, he's this the guy pissed? Is not, yeah, is inappropriate? I mean, he's, he's pissed. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's, first of all, I don't think, it's rare that someone's like feelings are inappropriate. This guy's not so far taking it out on the roommate, demanding the roommate pay half of the bill. I'm like, yeah, I would kind of be salty too, even if like, you know, even if I wasn't going to do anything about it. Yeah, he didn't actually really do it. But like internally, yeah, I would feel salty. I mean, I would... I would be pissed as the drunk guy, but I also as the other guy, I'd be like, fuck you. I'm not paying. For well, he's bill. not demanding that, too. It's like but a very there are no again. There's like no stakes here. Like he's just mad, assholes. but he's not demanding anything. Yeah. Like he would totally be the asshole if he tried to demand any kind of payback from the roommate. Also, a thousand seems relatively cheap for, for an ambulance. System, right? right. I know. I, thought, I honestly thought it was five hundred. I didn't know it was a thousand. Right? Oh, my God. And a night in a hotel. I thought a hotel, <laughs> hotel? hospital. <laughs> I was thinking about that when I was in the hospital. I was like, hospitals are pretty much motel quality, and they don't uh, cost motel prices. Nope. You know, they don't have you any nice You could be nice at the W art. for this much money. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if you're going to die, go to the freaking Four Seasons. Save some money. You're right. Well, I think uh, I'm curious, actually, how yeah, we're going to land know. on this. A- AITA for being livid at my roommate for calling me an ambulance. I'm going to drop and everyone sucks here because, Sarah, you sold me on, on this point that there was no, this wasn't about caring. And I think Carmen put it beautifully. They wanted to get rid of this guy. And, you know, I think he's an asshole for getting too drunk. You know how I feel about alcohol. That's a big fat ESH for me. Yeah. I guess I'm torn between that and no assholes here because then I'm like, on the one hand, Mm. I would be mad too. On the other hand, the roommate is not wrong for not wanting his other roommate to die. So I don't know. I could see it as no assholes here, but I like calling people assholes. So I'm going to go with everybody. (laughs) We're going to bring you on board, Sarah? I mean, I, eh, sure. Yeah. (laughs) 
AITA for kissing a male platonic. Platonic? Mm. I don't know how you say it, people. It means they like plates. Male platonic <laughs> friend. I have been dating my boyfriend for almost a year. I've never lied to him and been 100% upfront with him about the platonic friendships I've had with other men and how much I cherish those friendships. Last night, we were out to dinner with my best friend and her husband, who is also a very dear friend. The four of us had an incredible dinner, laughing, and I was so excited that they were finally able to meet my boyfriend. He and I are talking about our future, future, possibly moving in together, and have even entertained marriage. So it was so important to me that they all met each other since they all play such a pivotal role in my life. Once dinner concluded... As we all stood up to leave, I kissed on the lips and hugged my best friend and also her husband. This is nothing new between us, as it's just more a term of endearment. My boyfriend is furious with me. We got home from dinner and he wouldn't talk to me, then ended up telling me to leave his house. He said that's a deal breaker for him because it was so disrespectful. AITA. I don't kiss other guys on the lips. Right. Have you ever seen it? Have you seen it in Spain? No, in Spain they're they're just more like the sides. No, they're this, more like yeah. yeah. The, the the cheek kissing is very. I've seen Spanish. people kiss on the lips, and I I mean I've done it before, but maybe like when I don't have a boyfriend. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, so this is a thing. This is a this feels like this does feel disrespect. If I mean I you just have to basically put yourself in that situation. If I saw my boyfriend kissing someone on the mouth, uh, you know, I'd be like, what the fuck? You well, know? well, the other they, thing is like, if this is really something you do with your friends, why are these the only friends you're doing it with, and why has it never come up right, before? Exactly. That's a little weird. Yeah, Myrna F writes, my family is Central American, Mexican, and literally everyone we are friends with for more than a few years is automatically quote unquote quote, familia and kissing on the lips is among family, blood related or not. And you are confirming that there's there's truth to this, Carmen, in Spain no, as well. No, no, I've never done this in Spain. I'm saying every once in a while, if I'm drunk and single, I'll kiss people <laughs> on the mouth. Oh, I oh my totally, God, totally different thing. But never, never in Spain. Oh my God, they're so, they're way more uptight than we are. Like, that's family possible? wise, wow. like it's, you Interesting. know. It's yeah, but you don't have the war is the kind of stereotypical Latino warmth. Not did that. Is that not from Spain? I'm not at all? familiar with Latino warmth, but I just, <laughs> they, they seem warmer than, you know, it's just very in Spain. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I grew up, but like, if there's like a line of people and you're all having dinner, you literally go to each person and kiss them on their cheeks. And it's usually like an air kiss. It's not even on their cheek. Okay. Oh, that's a little. Yeah. That, that, okay. So yeah. now I'm. It's clear to me that that's, that's like the not, European that's cheek like kiss. The, that's for well sure. below Latinos because Latin. I mean, you go to Miami and everybody's kissing on the exactly, cheek. Yeah. And, I mean, it's crazy. Don't don't touch me, great aunt. <laughs> Oh, my relatives are dead. Okay. Uh, I wrote, what cultures have families that kiss on the lips besides Alabama, obviously? But um, shh, good one. It is a thing. I'm it, sure it's a thing it, it elsewhere. Is a thing. I mean, I talked to Myrna and I, and, I, and I said we should have her on the pod. We really should. It's very fascinating. And look, if I break it down, if I go into the logical part of my mind, I'm like putting your lips on another person's lips. There's nothing like it doesn't have to. I'm willing to say I, I believe this has happened to me. I believe some grandma or aunt kissed me on the lips at one point. I, sure. I believe that that is somewhere in my mind. It was when I was probably very young um, and not in a pervy way, but also in a way where I was like, what was that? I don't know. That was a thing. I think it just all really depends on what you grew up with. Cause I remember going to church as a kid and some families when they would say the, you know, the peace be with you, they would and oh. also with you and also thing, with you, right? they would kiss on the yeah. mouth. And I remember ah, being like, ew, you know? Yeah. But some people do that. So, you know, my, my thing is not that it's being done, but it's like, I don't trust this girl. Cause she's like, I've never lied to him. Been 100% upfront with him about my cherished male friendships. But I'm like, then how did this never ever come up? It just seems seems like yeah, you know, it also suspect. sounds like she might be interested in like a three summers. Like she's introducing this. <laughs> yeah, she's maybe and just making way. it. She's just going like, oh, that happens. I do that all the time. Yeah. That being you know? said, I think the boyfriend like massively overreacted. Yeah. I mean, uh, no. told her to leave the house. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, there is something about the fact that she did this right in front of him. Right. Usually part of the crime of cheating on someone is the concealing. Right. I mean, I don't think she cheated on him. That's mm -hmm. crazy. But no, like, of course not. No. And if she really wanted to do something, yeah, she would have done it behind yeah. his back. But I don't think, she, she, you know, he needs to kick her out of the house. 
Yeah, I feel like it could have um, just been like a, hey, what the hell was that talk later? But also, like you said, why is he finding this out? Why has this never come up before in a year? Yeah. Tyler A. writes, YTA, part of being in a relationship is respecting your partner's feelings. If they are hurt by you kissing other people on the mouth, it's not cool for you to keep doing it. You don't have to apologize. Just explain that you won't do it anymore out of respect for them. That seems legitimate. I mean, it also seems going along with your narrative, Sarah. It's like, oh, she's being selective about this. It's it's never come yeah. up before. And then it's also she's sort of uh, kind of doubling down in a sense where it's like she's not really conceding like, well, you know, you're right. This is the first time I did this. I can see how you would be shocked. It wasn't appropriate to not yeah. bounce this off you or anything. But maybe she it doesn't sound like she really got much of the chance to because he just went full nuclear and didn't really give her the opportunity to explain or anything. Yeah, I think kicking her out. I, I think kicking out is a bad move in general. I think there's something to be said there. You want to leave, right? Like if, if you're going to get heated or upset, you just leave. I mean, obviously there's situations where you should kick the other person out. Well, they should right. know to leave. Before yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you get caught cheating or something, obviously like you should leave. Like you are a monster. You have right. corrupted the family system. Now you must go without shelter. <laughs> You know, but like you should like be the bigger person and leave if you're so angry. Emma N writes, NTA, I'm British. We do it all the time. Family and friends. What is going on, Sarah? I don't know. I have British friends. I've never seen them do I've that. I've never seen my Literally British never. friends do that. Hey, I've seen Harry Potter. I don't remember that being part of the film. I would have liked it a lot more. <laughs> Elisa L says, NTA, he's over-sexualizing something that shouldn't be. You shouldn't have to change your platonic closeness for a partner who's refusing to see your side. I guess, but like, also he's entitled to be like, that's a deal breaker for me because it's disrespectful. I mean, I think that would be a little crazy too. It's like, hey, yeah, I mean, he could establish like from here on out, babe, like this, this got to stop. I can't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but for him to be like one and done, I think is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah they have a like, conversation. Yeah, yeah, you should have to sometimes change your platonic closeness for a partner because people have inappropriate friendships like all the time. Absolutely. So, like, I don't think she's right on that. I think she's right on maybe the sexualizing something that isn't inherently sexual. Right. And I think there's also a different thing kind of going off what you just said is, like, you should be aware, right? Like, you should be aware if something is inappropriate. Like, if you're hanging out with someone of the gender you're attracted to, hell yeah. I think I should. Can I get some points there for avoiding heteronormativity? There, uh, yes. Uh, then, you know, you should be like, could I be spending this time with my partner? Like, is this a little weird? Because, like, I think that's a very natural thing to happen. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's, it's fine. Yeah, well. If you, I'm just like, eh, I don't need to, to come up with more hypothetical examples to illustrate your point. I'm with you. Right, right. You just got to be cognizant of it. Because, look, there there is uh, subconscious things going on. That's that's all I'm talking about. Rob L. writes, lay off the wine, honey. <laughs> so harsh. <laughs> A couple of questions for the asshole. If these are such great friends that you kiss on the lips and you've been dating this guy for one year, why haven't you introduced them sooner? Would you care if your BS kiss, mm. if your BF killed his... Ki <laughs> killed! Wow. Murder's fine. A lot of Freudian things going on here. You're, would you care if That's your BS next. kissed his female friend right in front of you? I don't think she would. I think presumably not. But if it but. came up out of nowhere, she might be a little, you know surprised like what's going on yeah and then you don't know how many people she's doing that with and sometimes that just feels like an open door to, i don't know it just depends on your comfort a level interesting yeah you know? yeah i mean it's also a little unhygienic i could actually say that totally. about someone thing. said that in the group and i was like that's your biggest concern is like the germs okay i guess i mean really you're putting you're putting saliva to saliva contact you can really get some diseases moving i mean also i don't okay. think they're making out i mean but Sarah, still, if you're if you go to someone's house that you're dating and they're kissing their entire family on the mouth and then they kiss you. I don't Ugh. know. I feel like I kiss, kiss the whole family now. Exactly. And yeah, Sarah, yeah. I mean, look, I'm just a realistic situation here. Both people have slight open sores in their mouth with a little bit of blood. Congrats. Oh you just got God. AIDS. Stop. You just got AIDS. I, I mean, you. that could happen, Sarah. Yeah, yes. I'm just saying, don't kiss me on the mouth. All right. It's Give cool. me a hug and, and aim your breath away from me. Even when a we hug speak. sometimes. It's like, you know what? Fuck off. Yeah, we can just do an elbow <laughs> bump. Just do a fist bump. So I think we do agree AITA for kissing a male platonic friend. We Actually, don't trust submitter. I don't know what I think. <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, I'm, I am ready to say uh, YTA. I, I think that the boyfriend's furiousness is a bit overblown, but I, I don't trust submitter. I think she has manipulated the system here and, and something has been, this How, is something though, that You think she's up. like having a threesome with these people and no. is 
Like, so what do you think is really Everything going on? Everything that you said, it was, she, look, she knows that she could fly it, right? She knew that she, she, in the back of her head, I think this might have been a subconscious thing. Mm-hmm. In the back of her head, she knew she could get away with it. Like, maybe in her culture, it's it. a common thing. But she, she, she trotted it out selectively because she wanted to kiss this guy. Wow. Interesting. I, don't I know. got that vibe too. This was premeditated. Wow. This was premeditated. She's the asshole. What's that? Why? I don't know. Why TA? Carmen's learning quick. Sarah, come on board. Don't make us have a draw. You know that shit pisses me off. I don't know. That's like reading so far into it. Uh, fine. I'm going to kiss. I don't know. I think it's she like, wants to see other just people. Just in the pursuit of kissing this one guy, I'm also going to kiss my friend and I'm going to pretend Whatever. it's like a whole a thing that I do all the time. girl who gives a shift, you know? I've you kissed know guys, that's not what I mean, I've kissed Danny. guys to impress girls, you know? We do okay. crazy things for love. I don't know. I'm... I, I'm so undecided. I really can't. I feel like Mercury must be in retrograde because I can't make oh, a decision. Oh, God. But it actually ended yesterday. The horoscopes are, aren't are real. YTA to you, Sarah. I don't know. All right. Well, that's a draw. Okay. Carmen, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. Now, you told us, uh, I said, hey, what are some assholes you have? This is the pre-show interview everyone gets. <laughs> Tell us about all the assholes in your life. You mentioned you've got a brutal landlord, huh? Okay. So here's the story. Let me Tell me what you would do. He is about 76 years old Ooh. and he lives with his sister who's about 80 downstairs okay. and they won't raise the heat. They won't. Oh, and oh it's my God. It's criminal in New York. Yeah. Um, so it's like every once in a while it's warm, but it's not the thermostat. It, like the radiator's not hot. So we have these like portable heaters and everything. And then I go down there and I'm like, it's so cold upstairs. And he's like, it's not. And he'll point to his thermostat. And oh I'm my like, God. That's get not- a, can you get a thermostat or like a thermometer? Well, he controls everything. Yeah. But like one for your apartment to be like, yeah. here's how warm it actually is in our apartment. I think I just want him to come upstairs and he's playing this old man card. Uh, you know, I can't come in. Yeah. Too many so, <laughs> too I, this is my, this is what I think I'm going to do. And I figured this out today because this has been going on for a long time, but this winter, this is my, our third winter there and I'm done. And, Ugh. uh, I think I'm just going to be like, would you mind if I brought someone here to check the radiator? Because he's one of those, like, I got my people, you know, whenever yeah. there's a problem, he's got, oh, yeah. I got a man for you. I got, I got a radiator so guy. So if he would, not, <laughs> he would not want someone <laughs> to come up. So right. I think I'm going to be really? like, yeah, he'll be like, no, 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 let me check. He's yeah. He's Ooh. like an old control. Freak. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You're pretty chill. It seems. But I'm so, you no, I'm angry. I'm angry. You won't go three one one on this angry. motherfucker. No, I because I did a- that in my last apartment. Okay. And, what happened uh, for our non New Yorkers? Three one one is like woman, the line you call yeah, for these sorts of things. He's a nice, they're nice people. They, he's oh. just, wait, uh, what happened the last time you called three one one? Oh my God. I, and I waited <laughs> so long. The people too. got swatted. The lady, <laughs> the landlord, she was Hispanic. So she loved me because I would go down and translate. Oh, you that's know. hilarious. And she was in a wheelchair, so I felt really bad. Oh, oh boy. boy. And and it was free, like way worse than this one. And uh, and then finally I looked at my roommates and I was like, we're calling. And uh, and they came over and she was livid. And then I moved out. So Ooh. so that's funny because one of the things that's keeping you from coming at the 76-year-old guy is you think he's nice. I mean, they're good people. Like how? Like what? Like, like they bring us food all the time. Wow. They Ooh, give us kind of gifts food? for Christmas. Wow. Just oh, great that's food. Nice. Like he's just, I think he's just a stubborn old man and he's cheap and he doesn't want to right. fix Car- yeah, thing. Carmen, so. I made you a puzzle. I spent the last four years working on this 5,000 piece uh, cat. What was, oh my that? God. Uh, <laughs> So then you also said you you have a mouse problem. We have a mouse. I can't and I wait, where do you hate. live? <laughs> what? Where do you live? In Queens. Oh, we only too. have one mouse and I haven't uh, seen him. Oh my God. And ah. So you saw him once, but you didn't come But he's a dick him. because I know he's there That's, and he won't ooh. come out he's and he won't die. Do, uh, he that won't fucking die if so out. many traps out oh, and he won't die. Oh my God. That's funny. So this is another really cool thing. And you're telling Mm. me it's maybe a little more common. Well, I'm very ignorant. uh, Mm. But I I understand that you do stand up in English and in Spanish, which I know very few people who do. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's weird because, you know, when you have the experience of being a comedian, but then you do it in a new language, it kind of makes you feel like both. Like your experience, but you feel like an open micer because... yeah. The jokes are new. Do you find that the laughs... Are you able to translate a joke, I guess, would be Most the first of them. question. Not really? Yeah, but not all of them. 
That's so interesting. Mm. Um, and so I think, you know, we had Nate Fridson on the pod, who is a notorious heckler destroyer. What's up with the Spanish hecklers? How are they doing things? Um, I haven't had that many. I kind of provoke them and I want them to help me because if there's a word I don't know, I'll, oh, I'll, just, so I'll just yell out, how do I say this? <laughs> oh my God, I love it. And then like five or six people will have their own word. <laughs> and That's great. Yeah. So, but I haven't had anyone a horrible heckler from a Spanish show yet. But it's hard, you know, because I don't do them all the time. Right. So do you feel like, what's your comfort level performing in Spanish compared to English? Comfort is great. It's really? just, uh, uh, if I had to pick something challenging, it would be like the vocabulary. Cause like mm. every once in a while, a word will just like slip out. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, you kind of forget the jokes. Translation? I'll be like, I'll, I'll say the joke and then I'll be like the other day I was like, uh, I went hiking and I was like hiking. And this one woman was like, Montear. And then this other woman was like, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, <laughs> and like, none of these words sound familiar to me. And That's I'm like, so can funny. I just be like, hikear? Like, <laughs> right. You would do that just, in Italian. But most I know of the it's time. in there. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, what is that <gasps> word? One thing that always interests me about bilingual people is what language do you, do you think in? Obviously, you think in English, right? If it's if it's going that way, or do you find yourself... Yeah, but as a kid, because I get asked, like, you know, what do you dream in? But I would ah, say I was ask when I next. was in... When I was a kid, I'm sure I dreamt and thought in Spanish. Interesting. But then it just cool. kind of swayed over. Okay. What language do you count yeah. in? Oh, my God, in English. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the last thing my... Like my French teacher was telling me that like that's always the last thing that people like do yeah. in their native language is they yeah. they can't count in the other language. Yeah, I mean it's, trying to learn. it's it's weird because if I'm talking to my mom and I only speak to her in Spanish, then I do kind of change personalities and everything mm. I do is in Spanish. Cool. Isn't there yeah. a notion too about Spanish being much more formal? Right? We have the uh, I, I, it's the slipping usted. now. Usted. What is it? Yeah. Is it usted? usted. It's like a formal you. Yeah. Because what, what's going on? They're formal over there. Everybody's wearing I a tux just, or you what? Know, formal. Yeah. Like the British version of us, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like other languages have that. Have like a formal A formal word. you. Yeah. Like Hebrew or, or, or Italian or Italian, what Italian, French. Yeah. What, oh, vu? Is it, or what is it in French? Yeah. You use the you plural. You can use it as a formal and then in Italian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have you plural in English, but it's actually very casual. Y'all. <laughs> Y'all. I know we're just not formal at all over here. We suck. <laughs> <laughs> Our ambulance has cost a thousand dollars. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, this is a serious country, but not formal about it. So is there anything else uh, you'd like to, to talk about? I think that's it pretty much. If you want to come to my Spanish show, does this come out today? It does not. It oh. comes out um, on like Monday, a Monday. But you can pl- tell tell everyone where to find uh, you. Twitter. The weekend of Thanksgiving, I'm at the Philly Punchline, and uh, Friday and Saturday, and find me at at Carmen Comedian for everything. At wow, Carmen, you got you're universal the only handles. one. Queen, it's amazing. That's awesome. The only one. No, I'm just like you're the you only mean? Carmen comedian. Like oh. you got it. Too bad <laughs> other Carmen comedians. It's also good that you have that consistency. I mean, I had Danny yep, Vega scheme. sucks. Danny Vega comedy. Sarah's consistent, but confuses the shit out of me. I've been Ha-ha. like, hey, Sarah Carter. She's like, that's not my name. That's my handle. I, I don't really get mad when people get it confused. I just think it's funny. But you've known me so long that you shouldn't get it confused anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to call you Sarah Instagram. <laughs> that works. Well, well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, this has been a wild app, and we will see you next Monday morning. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.